This program contains language that is intended for mature or immature, or immature audiences. Anyone affiliated with this train wreck of a show assumes no responsibility for its content. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time to hide the kids and pop the top on a cold one. Coming to you from the extravagant studio at SAA Productions in Charleston, West Virginia, please welcome the inebriated cast of Section 304. All right, everybody, welcome in to Section 304. Here on iTunes and also you may be listening on YouTube. Hopefully we'll have some other formats moving forward, but that's where we're going to start first. Well, it only took us, what, six months to make it to the table? I'd say six months, a lot of arguments, uh, a lot of people quitting a different <laughs> time or two. Um, it's, it's been a long road, and uh, we're here. Well, yeah, well, you know, as we always say, you can, as one of us would quit, do you want to be Ringo or do you want to be James Best? Do you want to... Be in the Beatles or you don't want to be in the Beatles. So we're the Beatles of Mountaineer Podcast. Way would, to set the expectations <laughs> low. I would, I, would, I would prefer to not put us as the Beatles. I would like to stay in the Bon Jovi realm of uh, what's going on here. The Beatles is too high for me, and I don't like their music. So there you have it. Well, you're probably hearing some of the voices here, and I'll kind of just kick it around the horn here. To my immediate right is um, Matt Durrett, as we affectionately call him, Diddy. Yes, sir. He's, um, I would call him an expert in um, walking around the stadium with a high blood alcohol content and all things WV football and basketball. I've been, I've been patrolling that stadium for well over uh, probably 25 years. Uh, can't wait to get in there Saturday. I'm going to let you guys know I am coming out of a nap. Had a pretty long night last night. Uh, I've got two Gatorades in front of me instead of the beers because I drank a lot of keg beer last night. And... Uh, well, I forgot how keg beer makes you feel the next day. It's not good. I don't like it. Uh, so we're going with citrus cooler Gatorades. And uh, that's where that's where I'm at. I hit tutors pretty hard this morning. It's been a good day, and I'm excited to be here. And then sitting immediately to his right is uh, Cam McGrath. Cam is a... Uh Expert, I would. I, I don't know if I want to call him an expert. <laughs> I think if he was an expert, he would be probably working for one of the uh, the, the websites that handles all the, the recruiting type stuff. But he's really dialed into the recruiting realm and um, kind of keeps the rest of us uh, jackasses in check when it comes to uh, turning into much of a fanboy. So. <laughs> Welcome in, Cam. He, he's one of our silent members. Yeah. More silent members, but uh, Cam is king of the message board. Spent a lot of time on message boards. Got to keep you guys real. I'm the realist of the group. Maybe the Rich Rod lover of the group. Yeah, well, well, <laughs> we'll get to that. <laughs> we'll get into that. Cam seemed to um, start a little bit of a little bit of a storm this week on our through our Facebook page for those of you who participated in it. So we'll we'll dive into some Rich Rod conversation because we're gonna, if you haven't liked us. Yeah. By the way, uh, yeah. you can uh, find us there at Facebook.com or Facebook uh, backslash section three hundred four. Don't forget to hit Twitter. Nobody yeah. on here really likes to go to the Twitter page very much. I'm not a huge fan of Twitter. I like to read Twitter. When was the last time we checked post. that? I think I looked at the Twitter page uh, about three weeks ago or so. I'm not a huge Twitter fan. So you can go on there and like the page. Most of what we do comes through Facebook, but we do have a Twitter page because, uh, well, I guess that's just the social norm now. you got to have Twitter and Facebook or Facebook and Twitter. You can't have just one. There's a million other ones, too, but I'm just too old to dive into all that. And then our uh, our final uh, cast member, Mr. John Crum, who I don't know all that well. We just met a few weeks ago. He's he, he's more he's tied in with Diddy here, but just in our conversations, uh, I seem to think he's pretty dialed into uh, what we do. We're going to be doing here on the show, and I think he brought a cool book uh, for us to look at too. It's John Antonick's book, but uh, he's pretty dialed into the W realm, and you can probably find him. Half buzzed up in a blue lot somewhere. Never. Four games. Where do you where do you got where do you guys tailgate? Where I, do you tailgate? At? We tailgate in the blue lot. If you know the bars, we're usually right next to them. They usually have a pretty nice spread. That's the the corn dog. Look for the yes, corn dog flag. Look for the corn dog flag. 
Absolutely. That's where you'll find it. So, I mean, you've probably seen these sweet koozies we have. Uh, you know, we had those made. So if you're looking to grab a couple of those, you know, next Saturday, look for the corn dogs flag. Wait, maybe. Is, that, is that where you go, Cam? Where do you tailgate? I usually tailgate in the green lot. This year I'm going to be in the blue auxiliary lot. I can spend a lot of time over at the corn dog flag also. Kind of make the rounds. Yeah. I um, And you're, you hang out. I'm at the corn dogs flag. All right, so if, that's the location. For so me. I guess for week one, I can't make it up this week. Um, I've got some uh, issues or some things I need to take care of. But I think these gentlemen will be there. So if you want to swing by and say hello, uh, these three jackasses will be under the corn dog flag. If you stop by, you have to shotgun a beer with me. That's a rule. Well, that's, I've just put that out there for you. So if you stop by, you want one of these cozies, you're going to shotgun a beer with me to get it. So just. Just so you know. So, swing, you swing, so hopefully uh, to the bars and to Quinlan and everybody. We just invited everyone listening to your tailgate. So <laughs> Hope you don't mind. Hope you don't mind. So we'll, uh, that's, this is the crew. This is who we'll be listening to. We may have other people in and out throughout the course of the season, but uh, this is your starting lineup, so we know how that goes <laughs> throughout the course of any kind of sports season. So uh, first, I guess what we'll talk a little bit about is obviously – Let's talk a little bit about Georgia Southern. Um, and, I, and I don't want to get too far into uh, all the X's and O's and because I'm sure as hell not any type of um, offensive or defensive genius by any, by any of that means. But as far as an opening game, you know, obviously we opened with Alabama last year. And, um, and I thought we were going to be a little bit probably better than what we ended up being. But – I think this is a good game for us to open up with as far as having the level of experience. We have a quarterback, uh, a little bit of unsure what's going to be happening at receivers. What do you guys think about Georgia Southern as an opening game for us? I would say they're not to be taken lightly. They beat Florida, I think, two years ago. I know Florida wasn't very good, but Florida has plenty of talent. That being said, they're – they were replacing four or five linemen, and their quarterback suspended. So I expect us to win pretty easily, frankly. I'm bound. I'm taking the Mountaineers in the uh, the 20 that they're given. I'm going to put my money on Is that. that. The spread so can, yeah, the spread went to 20. Um, it was taken the off the books, though, because their quarterback suspended. I, got it. I saw it yesterday at 20, and I'm going to tell you uh, – I may put a paycheck on that because I feel like we're, <laughs> I feel like we're going to run away with this game. I don't think it's going to be close. I think this defense is stout. I think uh, you're going to see. I believe Georgia Southern runs a triple option. I think that's not going to cause any problems. I think you're going to see that secondary just shut everything down. And I think our, our defensive front's good, and I love the linebackers. I think we run away with this one. I'm going to say we win by 30 plus easy. Well. <laughs> And so all you bookies out there, call Matt up and, uh, and take his thirty points. What, what have you have you looked at Georgia Southern camp at all? Uh, not a whole lot. Like I said, just the well, as, far, well, as far as it, Georgia Southern being the first game of the season, you know, it's not Alabama. So what what kind of as Mountaineers as, win by twenty one? It's first game of the season at home at night. It's gonna be too much for them, especially without their starting quarterback. They're gonna get their yards. They were the leading rushing team in the NCAA last year, so they're gonna get yards. But I don't think it'll be enough. They got a great running back too. See, so yeah, well, what's his name? Bereta or something. something like that? Matt Bereta. Or, I, I don't know. I watched um, in this morning before I came in. I watched a little bit of the uh, highlights. It was the offensive highlights of Georgia Southern versus Florida. And um, one thing I noticed was a lot. Of, it, they look like Navy out there. A lot of triple yeah. option. Um, but I thought the key to it was their quarterback. I mean, he was killing. He ran for over a thousand yards last year. I'm not sure what his totals were as far as putting the ball in the air, but I just think that you know the triple option. If you don't have experience on defense, could be a problem. I just think top to bottom, they got we have too much coming back, experience and depth chart wise. That I just don't think it's going to be a problem. I think 7:30 under the lights in Morgantown, game one, it's 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 game over early. I look for my boy Willie Crest to get some PT at quarterback because I think this one's in the bag before halftime. <laughs> Cam, I mean, I'm looking at you. You want to check it? Don't start with the Crest stuff yet. Well, I'm not necessarily even talking about the quarterback situation. I'm just talking about, I mean, 30 points. I, me personally, I think it's going to be a little closer. I'm not so sure. Um, I think this might be one of those situations where Georgia Southern, if they come out, 
even with their backup quarterback, start moving the ball for us, I'm not so sure it's going to get out of hand early. I think they could get their yards, maybe even come out and score, but if the offense for us doesn't click immediately coming out and kind of just extinguish their, uh, you know, their hopes, um, I think it could be. I don't, I don't think we're going to quite get the 30. If this we got week two and we didn't have that much months to prepare for their offense and stuff like that, I'd be more concerned. Week two, a noon game, something like that maybe, but I'm not concerned in night time at home. I would say a couple things. Last year they had NC State and Georgia Tech on the ropes. Probably should have beaten NC State. I don't know how we compare to NC State, but we're about the same level. And then I would say the key for us is to get three and outs because if they can chew up clock and get first downs and then our offense stalls with a new quarterback or quasi-new quarterback, that's where I think we get into problems. So we got to get – we got to get them three and out, get them off the field, in my opinion. Yeah, I think so, too. I love this as an opening game. I love it for many reasons. I love it partially because the offense is going to be new. You got some new guys. You're receiver, you got some new linemen you're mixing in. I think this is a perfect game to start with. And, you know, you, you work your kinks out against this team. I know they're not to be taken lightly, but I think the loss of their quarterback made this game a uh, yeah. little easier. And I like, I'd like to see it be 60-40. Uh, running the ball and let Howard get the legs going and play action. And, you know, let's get those new receivers involved. I'm pretty excited about that receiving corp. And I just, I, I really, I just think a night game in Morgantown to open it up is just too much for Georgia Southern. And go ahead. I was going to say as critical as their quarterback being out, I think when they, the type of offense they run is a lot of it's based on timing. And when you're replacing four out of five linemen, you're, you're not going to have timing in the first game, especially against an experienced defense. Yeah, so I would agree with that. Man, I, that, I love our secondary so much. I mean, you're, you're looking at – I think possibly this is the best secondary we've had since Beasley and Logan and those guys. I mean, you're looking at Daryl Worley, who has Ricky Ronk backing him up, very capable, proved that last year against Baylor. you got a heavy hitter with K.J. Dillon. you got a really, really monster heavy hitter with, with Carl Joseph. And then you got Drayvon Henry and – Russell Douglas and Terrell Chestnut, and it just it goes on and on back there, man. And I I can't wait for Saturday night. I hope we defer, that we kick off to them, and I hope that defense just opens up a cannibal pass on this team from from beginning to end. And I can't wait to see it, man. I'm I'm pretty jacked. Well, we'll we'll dive into the a um, little bit more on the defensive end, and actually hearing a little bit here in the podcast. Um, you just brought up his name. Aaron Beasley is going to be joining us, and uh, we're going to be talking a little bit about the current defense. And uh, we'll kind of—I want to talk a little bit about that uh, defense, defensive backfield that he participated in with Mike Logan. And, they were pretty good. Yeah, they what were. Was that? Logan, Van Washington, Emmanuel, Beasley, Charles, Mike Manning. Logan. Good God, uh, probably the best defensive backfield ever. That was a wrecking game. crew. I'd say a couple of those guys went on to have pretty good pro careers. You're talking about Logan and Beasley. I mean, Beasley's. Beasley's probably my all-time favorite Mountaineer as far as that goes, and uh, I'm pretty excited to talk to that guy. I've got some questions for him that uh, just about the Big East back in that time, but we'll, we'll get to him later. So well, let's change gears a little bit. Let's talk a little bit about um, – we've talked about some of the new guys that have came on. Let's talk a little bit about the recruiting and some of the guys that have obviously showed up on campus and it can make a difference for us this year. We've – well, how do you guys think recruiting went? Let's start even just in perspective of the last two years, because it seems like the last two recruiting classes are really starting to show up in this in this depth chart. And uh, what do you guys? How do you guys think recruiting has been going so far? I think it's it's been pretty consistent. I mean, we're never going to recruit like Alabama or Ohio State. I think the key for us this year is I think we signed twenty two kids, and twenty one of them are on campus. Whereas in years past, we would have guys that didn't qualify, never showed up. So we're starting to see the payoff of that with the depth we have on defense. And I, I think with with what we have coming in, you got some JUCO guys and then some really highly regarded freshmen. So I think you're going to see some of those guys contribute early on, but we're also going to redshirt a lot of them, which is how you build depth. So I'm, I'm pretty happy with how they've recruited. I love this recruiting class, man. Uh, I mean – you just you, you think we're pretty solid at receiver with the kill shorts and and 
Jordan Thompson and Shelton Gibson and these guys coming back, but you have a receiver who shows up on campus late due to some clearinghouse issues in uh, Javon Durante. And I mean, this guy's this guy's starting at your outside wide receiver spot. I mean, what's that say about this kid? I think he's going to be electrifying. I think he's going to be a lot of fun to watch. Um, I also think being able to move shorts back into the slot and, and Thompson and Gibson maybe in the slot, I think that opens things up for them. And then I love uh, what I hear about Gary Jennings and uh, Karan White, which is Kevin's younger brother. And man, if he could do some of the stuff Kevin did, well, the, look out. The coach has said that White's Karan is further ahead than Kevin was at this point. So that's pretty, pretty high praise in my opinion. Yeah. I and think then Durant's rave reviews. Yeah. I think he's going to be your punt returner too. Per- personally, I think what we've seen in this offense is, you know, I guess when Dana first showed up, he talked a lot about how it's an easy to learn offense. So far, to me, it looks like, it looks like it's been a two year turnaround for the quarterbacks, the receivers, um, so, I don't personally expect a whole bunch from these new guys. I really don't. I mean, you look at the history um, of, of just freshmen, newcomers, you, they don't get a lot of catches. I'm really leaning on um, these the vets that we have that are coming back, and I really want to see Sheldon Gibson show up. Sheldon Gibson was, 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 that, kid was, that kid was highly, highly touted out of Ohio. And I think last year, you know, it's, it's it's the Bama game. You go back to that game and it's the third and seven. He has a crucial ball hit him in the hands and he drops it. And I think that just changed his whole season right there. I mean, I think yeah, that's that's like he dropped the ball play. and disappeared for the season. Yeah, I think that really just changed his whole outlook. I don't know if it rattled his nerves or confidence, but uh, that changed his whole whole season and the outlook on it. I'm excited to see him, and I think there's a lot of speed there. I think there's a lot of talent. I think that this offense could put up special, special numbers. And well, to, is it to be fair to Gibson though? He was behind Kevin White and Mario Alford. Yes, there. right. Yes, two guys that are pros. Yeah. So I watched him a lot on kickoff coverage, and he was a demon. He was down there making tackles. I think you saw he had a big play in the bowl game. I mean, there's a lot of potential there. Yeah. Well, Alford and, and White are gone, and that's yeah. why I'm yeah. really looking yeah. at him because, you know. Well, it's his time to step up. Yeah, he, right. you know, he's this is year three for him in the system, two years. So back to my theory of the two-year rule, this is where I really see it, think that he could jump out. And even Kevin White. Kevin, Kevin didn't really produce a lot his first year. He was inconsistent. So yeah. I think year two – He's the man. I think he could be the man for it. To compare him to Kevin White, I guess, where Kevin White and Trickett really clicked in the offseason working out together, it sounds like Howard and Gibson have sort of that same relationship. So I'm looking forward to him. Is it Durante or Durant? I think Durant is the E silent. Then I'm just spoke. I said his name wrong, man. He went. Uh, he went with the with the real nice pronunciation. The E silent just doesn't be there. It's Durant. So I apologize for that. I think the offense, and uh, you know, you can talk about all the speed and everything you want, but this team goes as far as that offensive line. And the offensive line, you're, you're losing Spain, and uh, you know, you lost another crucial starter in there. I can't can't place his name right off the top, but. Uh, I think the offensive line has just got to get it done. The game's won in the trenches. You can have all the speed and everything you want to, but if the quarterback doesn't have time to throw, you know, nothing you can do. But I'm really excited about this team. I uh, I think this this one's going to be special. I'm thinking, you know, maybe back to like Dana's Orange Bowl time, uh, you know, put paste in Clemson down there in the Orange Bowl. And I think this team's going to be really special, surprise some people, and I think we're going to kick the shit out of a lot of teams this year. And I'm jacked. I'm excited. <laughs> uh, well, <laughs> well, just t- well, you started talking a little bit about the offensive line play, and you know the one key element is going to be you've got a transfer from Michigan that's going to be able to step right in and kind of fill fill a gap. And and I don't, and I I agree with 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 what uh, Matt said. If if they're not blocking, especially on the run game, because with um with inexperienced wide, wide outs. New starter quarterback, uh, Russell Shell's got to be able to run the football. Absolutely. And if it don't, if they don't block for him, you know, because uh, it could be, I think it could, could spell trouble. If, if we can't run the football. Well, um, 
we got a red shirt freshman that they're raving about at left tackle. Uh, I don't know how to say his name, Kahuste. I mean, they're really talking this guy up. They said his talent level, his ceiling is really high, potentially a high NFL draft pick. I mean, that's that's big. That's big. We have he's got a dude on the field, you know. And then they've raved about the center Orlowski. They said he's one of the best they've ever seen at WVU. So I, I mean, what are we looking at linemen here? We've had you got Solomon Page, Donnie Barclay. Not a whole lot of linemen coming out of West Virginia and going pro. Uh, did Terry? Did Terry go back in the day? Um, but Barclay and uh, Solomon are the two that jump out at me. We've had we've had our fair share of. Um, Lime in West Virginia, in, in historically, I mean, maybe didn't have maybe Solomon expensive. Solomon Page Solomon Page. He played for the Cowboys for a Cowboy while. So guy. Guy. Joe Zwiak, you know, um, you know, uh, Nemo played Lance think, Nemo. Yeah. Um, you know, there's been a long, long. I history. think the line is huge. I think uh, we have all the skill spots. I think the running back man, you got three or four guys back there that can just hand it to him and go. I mean, you can. Put JT back there and let him come out of there. You got Smallwood. You got Russell Shell, who I'm not. I'm not sold on. I myself and would prefer to see DTW get a lot of carries because I heard that he's a. Uh, he runs. He's built like Sean Austin, but he runs a. Uh, you know, he just he's a hell of a lot faster than Austin. I mean, to put it point blank, we ran into Coach Holgerson at uh, an event for work, and he was telling me that Dante Thomas Williams is going to impress. But uh, he registered last year due to there being so many backs, and I'm really looking forward to seeing Dante Thomas Williams, you know, get going and turn and burn. And where's he at on the depth chart now? He's, I think he's fourth. They moved Wellman ahead of him. I think they're trying to motivate him. Yeah, he's having some motivational yeah. issues, some mental issues. So I think all that gets straightened out. I think I, I think I think you'll see him. I think he's probably a gamer. Um, I well, if you're sitting guy. fourth on the depth chart, it doesn't matter if you're a gamer or not. You can. <laughs> well, not get well I mean, Wellman's a fullback. I don't think they're going to run the fullback over him at tailback. I well, even at think... third spot, he's listen. They're going to run Russell Shell. Well, you, Shell's going to get a lot of carries. Shell's going to get a lot of carries. I've read good things about him. I just, I wasn't sold on him due to the fact that I think he dances more than he hits the hole. I think if he runs straight ahead, head down, power ball, you know, ground and pound, get what you can get. Stop trying to tiptoe up into the hole, just get it done. I think he could be a great back, but I'm not sold on that guy. He was nicked up a lot <laughs> last year, too. So hopefully he can stay healthy the whole year. Because he he looked great against Alabama. Yes, I would agree. He, he ran hard against them. It, I, liked, I liked him a lot in the Alabama game. But, uh, you know, I think, like I said, man, I'm, I'm going – Nine wins in the regular season, I think. And I'll give you the tenth as a bowl game, and I think the bowl game's going to be New Year's Day. Well, he's he's skipping episode two here. Yeah, he's you know, yeah, I'm just, hey, I'm just putting it out there, man. I'm excited about this team. I love it. I can't wait for this shit to kick off. Well, and I look for nine wins, tenth win going to be a bowl game, and just embarrassing somebody on a on a national stage. And it's time for this team to start getting some love and getting the respect nationally that they deserve. Well, speaking of time. Let's talk about Dana Holgerson for a second, and, and he doesn't have much time left. Um, Year five, he's hard to believe. He's got um, two years left on his contract. Um, I think, well, obviously, by listening to Rhett here, expectations are high for Dana this year. And um, there was some conversation on our Facebook page this week. Obviously, we all have various opinions of Dana and and what how things are happening. I personally, me, I think we are in a good position right now with Dana. The issue is you're talking year five, and a lot of times people don't give coaches, my opinion, historically, people don't give coaches enough time at, at schools. I mean, look what Michigan did to Rich. Um, and as soon as they got rid of him, they turned around and won 11 games. And then that big jackass, whatever that okay. guy, Poke, his well, he dumbass turns around and fucks up the next season. So here's what I'm saying. Year five, we're I think we're in a good spot with Dana. I don't I'm not judging him. Now, listen, if they shit the bed and only win two games this year, I'm judging him. If they win seven or eight games, I'm cool with it. You gotta um, have eight this year, man. You gotta have eight. Eight comes, killer cam. Well, killer cam. You know, 
I'm cool with it because I'm really not basing it on this year. I'm looking more towards next season. But here's the deal. Me he have to ex- uh, extend his contract. He's only has two years left. It starts to hurt recruiting right. if you don't extend his contract pretty much after this year. So it is his do or die year. Absolutely. Another factor is luck is gone. Luck hired him. You got to think Lines would want to get his own guy in there. Yeah, that's a very good go point. South. So I think here's what I want to see. I want to see a punt return team that can field punts and actually get yards. I want to see a team that doesn't fade in November like we've done the last three years. I, I want to see improvement. I, I think if we do some of those things, the wins will take care of themselves. But, I mean, we've just been inconsistent, man, and that's – that's what I'm tired of seeing, to be honest with you. Special teams have been awful. Well, it's not I, I think, the bush. too, you've seen a lot of carousel at the, at the position coaches. I mean, this I is not so much. The only one that's really been a carousel is the one who probably should have been out on his ass. Uh, the forced. Yeah. I mean, instead of moving that guy around, let's be serious. Pack well, your I'm shit talking, and get the buddy. He's done leave. nothing for this university, and uh, I'm pretty disgusted with the amount of money he's paid to basically – I would not think he does anything more than maybe book a couple of hotels. Hey, Dana says he's the best special teams coach in the country. Uh, well, him and Dana are buddies. I think you got to take care of your buddies if you're in a position to. Well, I'm going to call bullshit I'm, on the best special teams coach. I'm going to stand up for DeForest, believe it or not. Right. Lambert led the country in field goals last year in our. Really? He's not fucking kicking field goals. <laughs> Come on. Dude. And then our, our kick ahead. return was top 20. I, I don't know what our punt defense was, but it. The, the glaring thing for me is the punt returns. This guy is this guy is constant, just a, a, a mainstream joke. He wears his relaxed hat into the into the press conferences after the game. <laughs> you know, he's just a he's a Facebook meme, just waiting to be made after every game. He's really terrible. I don't care for him as a coach. I think that's the one flaw people keep wondering why Danny keeps him around. I think Danny's a great coach. I think if he was to be let go. We don't have anybody waiting, knocking on the door, wanting to move into the mountain state and bring it back. Some guy the other day tells me, oh, it's time to bring Nick Saban home. Well, (laughs) let me stop you with that shit right now because that ain't going to happen. Saban's got a pretty cush job at Alabama where he's winning a lot of games and making a shitload of money. Don't think he's coming back home. Not to mention that his pay his house to, off. Bless us to maybe take a hunting trip or something. But I think Dan is great. I love what he's doing. I think his his – only flaw that I have and the only problem I have is Joe DeForest still receives a check from WBU and that disgusts me. Uh, and I think, you know, you're talking year two now, and that staff is pretty stout. John Sider, uh, Monty Galloway, Bruce Tall's back, who I knew I know Bruce from my time when I worked at WBU. He's a great coach. And and I think the staff is solid. So I'm really hoping that they kick some ass this year, and they extend his contract. Not forget Damon Cogdale, baby, that Miramar pipeline. Damon well, Cogdale. I, I don't know. I don't know Damon. I don't know exactly what all he does. Is it like how good of a coach he is? I'm not sure if it's, you know. And I'm not d- dissing the guy because, um, but I just, you know, I'm talking about guys that are coaching, like coaching position coaches. He could be a great coach. I don't know. I just don't know much about him. I, and I'm just talking about. I think the staff is 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 together. It's full. And they gotta win, and then if they extend them, watch out because the recruiting is happening. You're not gonna have. I don't think you're gonna see as much of a carousel, people leaving the door, you know, revolving door type thing happening. Lonnie Galloway must just be a closer because I mean, this guy's getting just stud wide receivers left and right. Well, and, I mean, and this guy's got to be just once he's in the living room with the parents, he just. I guess he shuts it down because I mean, how we got Steve Smothers who's coming next year, not to look ahead. But Smothers is just a huge get for us. Yeah, big on that kid too. And I mean, Lonnie is just killing it. And then you got Jawan Sider, who I'm really, really high on. Like I said, I love the staff. I'm just really grossed out and kind of pissed off that Joe DeForest is still hanging around. All right. <laughs> well, you know, but back to Dana. So you think it has to be eight games? You have to. I agree with Cam. Or his I do. Goal. Yeah. So, but are you are you going to give me eight in the regular season, or are you giving me seven wins regular season, eight with a bowl game? Which way are you going with that? There, eight regular season, eight regular season. Let's gotta look at the schedule there, real fast. Got to go some... for nine with the bowl game, huh? 
We should uh, we should definitely win Georgia Southern. Well, let's let's not dive too far in our let's, okay. let's save all this for, for for the next show. Like, and we'll, all right, uh, but can you extend a coach with seven wins? You want to give the guy four more years, a contract for four more years, then you get locked into that. You end up having to pay a buyout if he keeps I, having mediocre seasons. Well, and, but the thing is, I, I think leading up to this season, I think there's been a lot of issues. You're talking last year. This last he gets year, this year. I give him this year. Last year was one. the first season they had a full roster of scholarship kids. That goes back to Bill Stewart's recruiting. Only yeah, take that recruiting, kids, that recruiting 17 was a kids. goddamn nightmare. Let's put that out there. Stu never signed a full class. It's gross. Everybody wanted to blame Dana for that shit. It's just crazy. No, that was that's yeah, on Stu. You can't, you can't sign covered bear. You can't you can't sign and bring in sixteen kids and expect, uh, you know. No, he was recruiting what he needed that year, and that's it. So you come in, you got no backups. You're finally at full scholarships. I think we're kicking some ass this year, and I think Killer Cam's going to have to go back on what he wants to do, bringing Rich Rod back. I think he'll be a Holgerson <laughs> man after this year. Let's, let's dive into a little bit of that. Cam goes on. He doesn't really log into the Facebook page all that much, and he pops up a picture of Rich Rod, giving the thumbs up. People and, love to hate Rich Rod. And ignites a shitstorm. Um, I, listen, as far as Rich goes, the stars, that's a lineup perfect. And when I say perfect, I mean perfect. For him to come back to West Virginia. First of all, I don't think he's going to be at Arizona much longer. I think he's personally, I think he's going to end up being at Virginia Tech when Beamer leaves. Uh, just to his connection with the AD there. He has a relationship um, with Whit Babcock. Whit, Whit was uh, at WVU. He was the, the, one of the main donor guys with the Mac, and he was Rich's boy. He's now the AD at Virginia Tech. And we know coaches get hired based on our relationship with the AD. How do you think Dana got here? So, that being said, it. you have Gibby and Tall currently on the staff. Is that foreshadowing? No. I mean, you as don't far think so? as what? Foreshadowing Rich is com- uh, coming Rich back. coming back, sort of getting some of the old guys in here already. Getting the band back together? Yeah. Oh, well, there he's got is. the band back together in Arizona. I mean, you know. I don't think that guy leaves Arizona. I think in yeah, Arizona, he, he has the expectation level. Arizona's a basketball school. This guy's getting his money. He's putting up seven, eight wins a year. They're loving it. I, I mean, so you, you know, stay? You don't I, go to Virginia Tech? I don't know. I don't, or like, anywhere else? I don't know how that Everything I've heard says Rich wants to get back to this area, well, this, uh, this coast, If you go to region. Virginia Tech, just... just don't ever let me catch you back in the state. That'd be well, fucking he great. comes to the state all the time. I mean, you can't, you can't go. You can't go to Virginia Tech after you've coached here. It'd be like going to Pitt. I mean, it's just it's fucking disgusting. Even I don't even want to talk about well, that anymore. Well, I'm done. As far, I'm out on this. as far as him coming back to West Virginia, the stars would have to line up perfect. And but then let's pretend. Let's pretend for a second. They say, "All right, we're going to hire Rich Rodriguez." People are going to be pissed. Per, me personally, I know Rich. I like Rich. I would welcome Rich back. I would help him freaking pack up and move back if and listen this isn't a, a slam on Dana because I'm I am I'm in Dana's corner I want Dana to be here for 20 years win national championship but let's pretend they shit the bed this year and they start looking for a new coach to get Rich Rodriguez back here you would have to first of all piss off a bunch of people you're going to have to hire the best PR firm in the world in my opinion to keep a lot of people on board but then again our fans bagged Gibby, and now they're kissing his ass because our defense is kicking ass. Can you, so, can you really still hate Rich? I mean, let's be honest here. What are we talking about? You're no, talking I'm about over- a guy who left and went to Michigan. Michigan is a fucking mecca of football. If any of you are offered a Michigan job, you're going to take it. It's the well, big house. I, I don't think it's so much. It's under the Well, I mean, John Beeline went there. You know, and was, I think it was the way it happened. And, you know, well, it's all it that conspiracy theory shit that, that's out there. It went down bad. But at the end of the day, the guy's a hell of a coach, man. Hey, if something happens with Dana and Rich wants to come back, I don't think we're going to do much better. And I think the guy come back and I think everybody would accept him. I hey. think all it would take is one half ass public apology. That's all it take. Yeah. I think so, all look it how take, we took Gibby back. I think we all love it takes now. is winning. Winning, winning, winning makes you for, winning Absolutely. makes you forget about a lot of shit. So. I think his offense would run over all the defenses in the Big Twelve. Well, he's he's geared for the big the big um, Big Twelve. Yeah, his offense would be um, uh, suitable for this, and he could if he would get his guys in here. Yeah, I think I think Rich Rich could come back. I think people would get over it because winning takes care of a lot of past problems that you may have with the guy. 
And at the end of the day, I mean, he really was, he kind of brought Mountaineer football back to a spot where, you know, I we, think he we took were, it to another level. Yeah, I mean, you yeah. know, you're you're one one win away from playing for a national title. I'm not going to get into that loss because it's still very painful, and I hate to talk about it. I hate to think about it, but uh, that guy's taken us to a place that, you know, he, he he was great. But that being said, I love the guy we have now, and I think yeah. nine, ten wins this year. Cam's going to have to eat his words. He's going to have to be a Holgerson guy after this year. <laughs> you haven't heard my predictions yet. You don't know what I'm going to say. He, he, he might be on board. We're going to do that. In the I don't know, man. Any guy who, who, who posts a picture like that of Rod with his goofy-ass face and thumbs up on the, on the page, I mean. In the mock turtleneck. Yeah, I think he's, was I think he's a Rod. I remember, too. That was like, I think that was like the second, his first or second season. So, in 2002, I rocked a mock turtleneck. I mean, it was probably issued through Nike at the time. So, um, but yeah, I, I think. Um, I mean, let's. I, I got it right here. Let's just. Let's really. Let's just look at this. That's that's. It's the that's basically winner down the Alabama job. Was that the? Is that yeah. the presser? Yeah. So. My man got a lot of. He got a lot of play on the internet with that shit, though. I mean, hell, he's looking at sixty-six thousand people reached or something. A lot of comments, and he's just firing them up, getting you ready for Mountain Air football and. Hopefully we see all you guys Saturday. I'm looking forward to it. And like I said, you want some of these badass koozies, you got to shotgun a beer with your boy. Yeah. Well, let's talk a little bit. Uh, you know, one thing I think is actually going to win some ball games for us, especially early. Um, I think our defense is going to be much improved. Let's let's look at the defense this year. Um, first of all, once again, that defensive backfield is pretty stout. Pretty stout. Uh, you guys want to talk a little bit about that? And I do. Uh, I want to talk down. about my boy Daryl Worley. I think he, uh, he might he might kill somebody this year. Daryl Daryl's a great cover guy. Uh, I look forward to watching him, and I like knowing that Ricky Rump's right there behind him, and then you know him and Carl Joseph, KJ, Carl Joseph, and really? KJ Dillon, the double KJs back there. They just like to light people up, and they like to hurt people. It reminds me a lot of Ricky Sherrod, the way he just used to fucking hurl himself at people, and just so violent. But these guys do it with their head up. Well, look, I, would, I mean, I think Carl Joseph almost killed a man in Texas. Two years ago, that may be one of the greatest hits I've ever seen, and I think he's had at least one to two games every year since he's been on campus where I've literally thought he's left someone unconscious on the field. Well, he due to his he brought up one of the great uh, hard hitters, Ricky Sherrod. I'll never forget one year. It was actually the game um, that Coach Nealon uh, ended up announced his retirement that we blew it there at the end. But Syracuse had a wide receiver. His last, his last name was Woodcock, of all damn things. Rick Sherrod fucking hit him so hard that whole day. I, th I literally thought the kid was going to – at one point I thought he was crying on the field. <laughs> and Sean Hackett, you guys remember him? Oh, you know, yeah. That dude. He I can mean, stick. He – and let me tell you, um, number eight is right there with those guys. I'll tell you, the guy that we didn't mention, though, is Trayvon Henry. I mean, uh -huh. he's one of the highest recruited guys we ever got. He's back there at free safety. He started as a true freshman, and really Dre is one of the recruits that panned out right away. Yes, yep. that's one guy that lived up to his stars, and he earned it. And that was a hell of a moment watching him take that pick pick six back uh, against Oklahoma State. I think that was kind of—I mean, he's like Crum said, he started. I think that was his moment to you know let everybody know, hey, I'm here. And uh, I just—I mean, just the way Carl Joseph and and KJ Dillon love to just wreck people. I can't wait. I, I'm going to call it right now. I'm going to put a prediction out there. They're going to hurt two people on Saturday. <laughs> it's like a WWF threat. Yeah. <laughs> They're going to hurt two people on Saturday. Look for it. And and I'm hoping one of them gets into the uh, throwing the baseball up, knocking the shit out of the park after they're laying the wood this year. I'm really, really looking forward to that secondary. Well, and also, too, I think one of the key um, elements – one of the things that really has helped this defense in this conference has been that three-three-five stack. The linebackers are much more; uh, they're able to attack. We got speed on the perimeter, and I think that bringing that defense back at West Virginia has helped them a lot in this conference. What about stopping the run? We were not good at stopping the run last year, especially against power backs, power running teams. All right, I got some stats here in Cam's yeah, like right. To I mean, we gave up over 200 yards rushing in six games. I think they were sort of 
bipolar because against Baylor, they shut Baylor's run completely down. They got a pretty good offense. And then I think we gave up one yard to Kansas State. So last year, man, I feel like the defense was on the field just a lot. I mean, you know, man, I don't, I don't have the minutes and numbers and all that shit. I feel like the defense was on the field a lot, kept us in a lot of games. And I feel like you just kind of get exhausted. I mean, you're, you're out there so much and maybe a little wear and tear. Uh, but you know I, what that is? We turned the ball over a yeah. lot last year. Yeah, they I mean, were on the field a lot. And I think if you got if you got the defense on on the field that much, uh, you know, they're going to wear out and you're going to give up some yards. But this defense this year, man, I mean, I'm just looking at the roster right now and it's just I, I don't see how it's not the best defense in the Big 12. Well, yeah, I'll, I'll second that. I'll I second really that. don't. I see no other place for this team to reside than at the top of the Big 12 in, in, in defensive stats and what they're doing. And I hope to see a lot more turnovers this year. Because well, I know we turned it over a lot, but we didn't force a lot of turnovers last year. And I think, I think this is the year that this defense is this defense is going to really, really put a hurt on some people. We were 119th out of 128 in turnover margin last year. Yeah, that's, and, and the thing about that, I mean, you still won ball games. It's amazing that we won yeah, seven games. Won. Yeah, Probably could have won nine or ten. You, turn, you, get, four you get more turnovers. <laughs> Hell, we had TCU on the ropes. We should have, you know, that should have been a good year last year. We just, like you said, kind of slowed down at the end and fell out of some games and, and made some costly turnovers and whatnot. Well, uh, we're still trying to get a hold of Aaron Beasley, and, and hopefully uh, he'll he'll call us back here. We, we've been trying to put in some calls. But what, let's uh, before we jump into a break here, it looks like we have a few minutes left in the show. We want to, um, first of all, acknowledge our fan of the week, and uh, our Bear Wood Company Fan of the Week. And listen, if you guys want to be picked as our Fan of the Week, um, all you have to do, like this week when you're at the ball game and you're taking all those damn selfies, email one in to us at section 304wv um, at gmail.com, and we'll pick a weekly Fan of the Week. You'll be entered in to win uh, one of those. Have you guys seen those? what we're giving away at the end of yeah, the season. They're awesome. The Bear Wood Company has given us, um, it's an outline of the state of West Virginia. It's reclaimed wood. And, um, and you can check it out. We've been kind of pumping it to the Facebook page and showing you a picture. But everyone will be entered weekly. Uh, we'll send uh, our send you guys a koozie when you're selected. And then uh, at the end of the season, we're going to select a grand prize winner. So this week's winner is uh, Melissa Bono from Spencer, West Virginia. She sent in this. Did you? Um, and we'll post it on Facebook. She sent in this picture. Did you guys see it? I didn't. In the it. Gmail account, it's a picture. It's a picture of her at like a power park. And, uh, and first of all, she's a good looking woman. But she's giving us the, the <laughs> horns down. And then she was, at, I guess, at Hooters. And like had her car washed by the Hooters girls. They were in like their bikinis and had them given the horns down. So um, I dig it. That was, Solid. That was yeah. pretty much an automatic winner for me. I didn't really dive too far, too much further past the emails yeah. once that that one came in. So uh, thank you, Melissa, for sending that in, and we'll get a, a koozie out to you in the mail. Once again, if you want to be selected as fan of the week, uh, send us in an email, a photo in your WVU gear to section three hundred four WV at gmail.com and uh, we'll take a quick break and hopefully we'll get Aaron Beasley on the line if not uh, I'll just scratch bees off my list as uh, one of my good friends we'll take a quick break we'll be right back do you love West Virginia check out home furnishings by Bearwood Company log into bearwoodcompany.com and put West Virginia pride in your decorating design the Bearwood Company always home for the best in vintage advertising signs, World War II collectibles, collectible vinyl records, and coins, check out our friends at Red Fox Antiques and Collectibles in Scott Depot, right off I-64, exit 40. This isn't your grandma's antique shop. This is a mantique shop. For more information, check them out on Facebook or give them a call, 304-757-9589. The Dell Sparks Collection. Dell's documented WVU sports for over 30 years and features the greatest moments in Mountaineer history. Check out his magic moments from Major Harris, Pat White, Tavon Austin, and so many more. For all of your favorite Mountaineer moments printed and framed, visit DellSparks.com or give him a call, 304-296-6004. The Griffith Law Center, PLLC. 
a Charleston-based law firm servicing in the entire state of West Virginia and parts of Southern Kentucky, specializing in serious injuries, wrongful death, and wrongful termination. The Griffith Law Center. Now you have a friend that's a lawyer. Call today for a free consultation at 304-345-8999 or give them a visit on the web at protectingwv.com. For all of your web and graphic design, go with the best. Go with our friends at Loggerhead Designs. They're true graphic professionals. Anything from business cards to high-end websites, they can handle it all. The next time you need your ads to really pop, head over to loggerheaddesigns.com or call 910-541-0143. All right, welcome back into Section 304. And if you're still listening, thank you because I'm sure some people probably tune us dumbasses out a little bit. But that's all right. If you're still listening, thanks. And if you checked us out, uh, we really appreciate it. And we're going to kind of wrap up the show. Uh, we weren't able to get in touch with Aaron Beasley, but we'll get Bees on um, again here, one of the, the shows down the, the, the road, and uh, just kind of get out of the show. I want to kind of kick it around the horn a little bit and just kind of see um, what what are some key things that you expect to see that's going to lead to eight, nine, ten wins um, for the season. You know, I, I think one. I think we all agree it's got to get to that point. So, what are some things that have to happen to have a successful season? And, and uh, Cam, I'll start with you. All right, I'd like to see some punt returns. I don't remember the last time we actually returned a punt. Uh, Sheldon Gibson stepping up. Skyho having a big year. Uh, that's pretty much it for me. So special teams, absolutely got to be special teams. Punt returns, a key thing, and, and I think sometimes people forget about how important that aspect of the game is. I mean, Not literally, huge. it screwed us over the last three years. Special teams have literally killed us and lost games for us. And our Big games, wasn't great Oklahoma. Yet. Yeah, there was a backbreaking kick return against Oklahoma. Uh, LSU, yeah. uh, the, his first season on yeah. uh, Dana's first season, that that kick return LSU. I mean, that backbreaker. Just change the momentum of the game. So that's that's a good call, special teams. John? To piggyback off of what Cam said, I mean, Thompson averaged 4.3 yards a punt return. I guess to put that in perspective, the leader in the NCAA averaged 23.8. I mean, see our leading punt 20 return. 20 yards difference. You, that flip in the field is huge. It's pretty gross. Um, and then my other thing is turnovers. Our turnover margin was terrible last year. And I think a lot of turnovers are luck. So the ball bounces funny ways. Hopefully they bounce our way this year. I mean, Carl Joseph, on his little highlight tape on YouTube, I recommend you check it out. He caused four fumbles, and the ball just immediately rolled out of bounds. So hopefully the pendulum swings back our way this year a little bit. Did he? I'm looking for a uh, just explosive, top-notch offense and a – Badass defense that just wrecks people. I'm so excited about this defense, man. I really can't tell you enough how excited I am. I mean, you're looking at just Quidikowski, Isaiah Bruce, Jared Barber, the, the the secondary, Shaq Petway, Kyle Rose. You're looking at just a lot of guys who have been in the system for a while, and I think this is the year it all comes together on defense, and I think we're just going to be leveling people out there. And I cannot wait. Like I said, I hope Saturday – we defer, and that defense drops the hammer early, just sets the tone, and then just keep it rolling, just keep it rolling. And I think the offense, I'm a little concerned about, you know, you're in your fifth year, and you don't necessarily – you have a starter, but is he starter by committee because you're not comfortable enough? I think in your fifth year, it shouldn't even be a question who your quarterback's going to be. I'm a little uh, – I want to see that offense because I think there's a lot of tools there, but I'm not sold on the quarterback position. And I know watching the spring game, I know a couple of you guys were at the house with me, the spring game was just, pass game did not look good. That being said, I think we have to be a ground and pound, 60-40 run team. I'm looking, even though I'm not sold on him, I think Shell could have a big year. I think Dante Thomas Williams, Smallwood, I think there's just a lot of excitement around this around this offense, and I'm really, really looking forward to seeing what they got. And uh, the defense, man, I just can't say enough about it. I love it. I can't wait. Like I said, I'm looking for 
both KJs to be knocking people out, knocking dicks in dirt, and, you know, just really getting after it. And that's that's my thing. I'm just excited for the whole damn team. <laughs> I can't wait. There's no other way to put it. I'm excited for the whole goddamn team. I can't wait to see it. And uh, I think I think this is the year Dana puts all doubters to bed. He's got the full roster. He's loaded. The recruiting's great. It, the, you know, no better time to be a Mountaineer fan than now. And I look forward to, you know, hopefully seeing everybody next Saturday up in the lot in the game. And, man, I'm just, I can't wait. I can't wait for this team. For me, um, I think some things that really have to, that, that to come about is the receiving core. Um, if, if, if Shelton Gibson, he's the guy that I'm looking at as being one of the key elements of this offense, he has to step up. Um, we talked a little bit about it earlier, the, the running game. Um, Shell's got to run north-south. He, he, he dances a little bit, like you said earlier. He dances a little bit. Man, if he would hit the hole, like Avon Coburn hit the hole, who wasn't uh, the speediest guy in the world, but he hit the hole and he got his yards. If he would get up in there, he would really, really pick – he would – be a much better back. He's a big time talent. There's yeah, but he's he's that. talented, yeah. and I'm hoping that Juwan's worked with him this year, stopping that dance. You know, he's got too much of that dance machine shit happening. So hopefully Juwan's got him hitting the holes. If he hits the holes, he could really be dangerous. So I think running the football, having our receivers step up, taking the pressure off of Skylar Howard. Um, you know, I I I don't know how much. Um, talent that kid has. I know coming out of junior college, he was uh, one of the best mobile quarterbacks, and he showed it last year. He's able to get you yards, and I don't know where his passing game is. We'll see because we haven't really seen him throw the football a lot. But um, I think if you can um, – if the receivers step up and you can run the football, take the pressure off of Schuyler, and just let him get the yards when he needs to get the yards and not necessarily put him out there to win football games, I think the offense – could really, really click because Dana's smart enough to know how to use Schuyler and let him run the football. And I think you're going to actually – I wouldn't be surprised if you can see a little bit of option on this offense this year. He's, I don't think he's going to drop him back straight back. I think they're going to roll the pocket a little bit and try to get the ball out to these receivers because he's got the wheels. Um, defensively, we've talked about that all day long. I, I, I have no issues with this defense. This defense is really going to hammer some people this year. And they've got depth, too, which is key, because if you can't um, keep up with these fast-paced offenses in the Big 12, covering these receivers in long patterns, uh, your guys get tired, and then you got some young kid back there or maybe somebody that's not as talented as your starter, and you get beat, beat deep on a play. So I think that the depth on the defense is going to be huge. And um, and like you said, special teams. If these, if we do, Special teams and turnovers. If we don't get some turnovers this year, um, we're screwed. Does Howard kind of remind you of Pat, like with the setup? Pat, Pat never had the greatest arm, but Pat was just really athletic, super gifted. We ran a lot of zone read. I mean, do you think? I mean, is that even an option? I don't think they're going to do a lot of zone read. I can't imagine it turning into that. I think Scott Skyler's got enough arm to run this offense, the offense effectively, and get the ball out to the receivers. Um, the key is, once again, and you know one thing about this offense, too, is when have you ever seen them really, uh, any of our quarterbacks or any Dana's quarterbacks, dissect somebody? A lot of times it is the receiver. How many times they just throw it up to Kevin White and go get it? Yeah. yeah. I mean, you, you've got to have big physical receivers and guys that want to go get They got the some size this year. You know, Kevin's brother's 6'2". You're looking at uh, Durant, 6'1". Uh, you're, you're looking at K.J. Myers at 6'2". Shorts is 6'1". I believe Gibson's our smallest receiver at five. No, nope, Vernon Davis at five ten. Thompson's got to be the smallest. Yeah. Well, yeah, five seven. Sorry about that. Uh, and you're you're looking at some decent size. Gary Jennings is six two. You're looking at some guys who uh, they're just you, you got to put it up there and they got to go get it. Yeah. If I and, if, if I say one thing about Howard though, he's mobile enough. He's got escapability. I think we're going to be able to roll him out a little bit. And if we can set up the run game with play action, that that's great. And I think if we were having the show August 2014, none of us, if you'd ask us who the starting quarterback was going to be, I don't think all of us would have been that high on Trickett. So I think year two in Dana's system, uh, 
I, I think he's. I think Howard's going to have a good year. I really do. Yeah, you bring up a great point there with the tricky comment, man, because I was a guy, I'm not going to lie to you, I wasn't extremely high on Clint Trickett. And, uh, well, he made me shit, didn't he? Because that guy looked really, really good last year. And I'm hoping to eat shit again with Skylar Howard. I'm not sold on him, but uh, I like the escapability. I like the legs. I like he can run. I like uh, – I guess we'll find out. I haven't seen a whole lot of him, and I just – I guess my thing is, man, I watched a lot of William Crest highlight tapes. I was, I was, <laughs> well, you know, I was so ready for it, dude. I was ready for the Crest error to begin. And I, think, just, I think I think Mountaineer fans, first of all, you got to learn to quit watching that type of shit. But I can't really, do. I love them. But you got to, you can't put expectations on kids. I mean, how many times I think have Pat you seen White, these these damn highlight yeah. videos? These, I hate that shit. And people watch that stuff and they expect a kid to walk right in and like. Knock it out of the park. Right. They and immediately then, compare him to Pat White. Or, yeah. Who was great as a redshirt freshman. Everyone's not Pat White, obviously. That doesn't happen yeah. that way. It, I mean, you watch that shit on YouTube, and then people get so jacked up when these kids come. I mean, like, look at Shelton Gibson, for instance. He, he, the way he came in, and here we're still, what, year three for him in the program, expecting him to break out. You can't put expectations. That being them. said, I'm going to direct everyone to go to YouTube and look up Stephen Smothers because the guy is a badass. And Get hyped. Fly. Yeah. All right. Well, Get let's talk a little up. bit about George Southern, and we'll and we'll do this real quick. Let's. Uh, I necessarily don't need your 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 breakdown. Just kind of give us your prediction. What do you think? Um, being the situation with their quarterback, uh, let's just get some predictions real quick. Give us give us your prediction. Forty four to thirteen, West Virginia. Sheldon Gibson takes one of those slip screens at least 40 yards for a touchdown. And the defense is as good as advertised. I'm going to go with uh, 42-21 Mountaineers. Skyho has 300 yards in the air, 75 on the ground, three touchdowns. Jeez, all right. I mean, let's put it in the 50s, man. Let's call it <laughs> what it is here. I'm, 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 I'm going to say we put up around 56 to 60-some points on the board. Uh it's not going to be close. It's going to be raucous. It's going to be rolling up there. It's a night game. You know, the defense is going to bring that sledgehammer out. They're going to drop it on the field before the game, and then they're going to drop that fucking hammer during the game. And I think we roll this team. I'm going to put us up there. We're going to go 56 to, let's say, 14. I'll give them two touchdowns. We'll give them a little garbage time, TD. But uh, this one's not going to be close, folks. And if you want, go ahead, call your bookie, call that in, bet that line. Thank me later. You're welcome. Do you want do you want to tell the listeners what your uh, betting record was last year before they go <laughs> listening to you? Oh, I, don't, I don't know why we have to dive into this, Lou. Uh, I think everyone who knows me, and if you if you know me, you know that I had an extremely cold snap last year with right, about so then, once uh, again, four call to five your months, <laughs> like he four said, four to five months. We're starting out on a, hey, it's a new fresh season. Start. He's new due. Season. This is a fresh start. You're due. This is a fresh start. I mean, you know, hey, I called it. Two weeks ago when Jason Day won the PGA, shit is going my way. I actually had him winning it at 12 under, and golf is a pretty hard event to pick. I mean, if you're picking one out of 100 and some people and you call the winner, I feel like shit's going to go my way, and hey, let's make some money together this year, folks. Call it in. Get it before it moves over the 20, and if you can find it at 20, take it all day long. All right, for me, I think uh, I think West Virginia comes out and, and looks pretty good. I think... Um, I want to say it's probably going to be like a, I want to say like 34-17 type of game. I don't think we're going to just roll them. Um, that score is close to me. But, you know, it, and it, well, it's an issue. It's just an issue in their offense. I'll look for 34 points for us. Give me a goddamn break. All right. Well, I'm, I'm looking at 34. 7-30 I'm looking at 34. night game. I'm oh, looking for 34, well, 34-17, and, and where they get to 17, it'll probably be 34-10. They'll probably get some bullshit you're toss gonna, out there. You're going to give him 17? God, you're gross. Their kicker's awful. I don't think they're going to kick any field goals. Well, I'm, that's just where I'm calling it. I, I just First game of the season, new quarterback, new receivers. 34 um, fucking points, though. God, you're so low. You're setting the bar so low. All right. This well, offense, is gonna. they're going to put numbers. Lou, we're posting numbers this year, baby. We're back. Playing in a New Year's Day game bowl. I'm going to call it. We're going to be big. We're going to be legitimate. We're going to be ruining people. I can't wait for it. All right. The this defense is dropping the hammer. The offense is sticking it up people's ass. Here we go. Guys, and you guys know who the fanboy of this crew is. That's probably me. And for the rest of the guys, uh, we want to thank you guys for listening in. Once again, don't forget to send your pictures in to be considered for our Bear Company Fan of the Week. 
to section304wv at gmail.com. And again, thank you and congratulations to Melissa Bonin from Spencer, West Virginia. And thank you guys for tuning in this week and checking out the boys here in section 304. Well, let's just drop one more warning on them here. If you're at the game Saturday and you're looking for a place to have a couple of beers and meet up with a corn dogs flag, you can shotgun beer with me. Cam will sip wine with you, and Crumb may share his chicken wings. So, corn dog flag, ladies and gentlemen, corn dog flag. Giving his chicken wings away. All right. Well, next week or, or um, here in sec- next or our second show, uh, we're going to try to get with uh, Rashid Marshall. We'll talk a little bit about it. And as you can see, Durant probably has us winning it all this year. So tune uh, in. No national championships. Tune in for episode two, and uh, thanks for coming into section three hundred four. Producer for Section 304 is Steve Adams for SAA Productions. SAA Productions specializes in affordable, small-scale audio and video projects. Wanted to jump on the podcast bandwagon? Call 304-299-1234. That's 304-299-1234. And don't forget to check us out on Facebook and on Twitter.